Hey guys, it's me. <laughs> hey, we're back. We're back for another Thursday paint along. And so today we're going to be doing something a little bit different in the fact that I'm going to be using a little bit of gouache at the end. And um, I'm really loving this gouache stuff. It's really kind of neat. It is watercolor and um, people keep on thinking, you know, that, you know, what, what are you using, David? Is it something different? No, it's watercolor. It's just opaque watercolor. It's the same thing. I can mix it in the same palette. So it's all good. So don't be afraid of gouache. It's a really um, fun thing. So that's what we do tonight. And um, so our, I'm not sure if I had this before, but Simply Spiked is our today's drink. And it's a lemonade watermelon. I may have had this, but there's no, nothing else in the house. So, but I don't remember. But I'm sure it's going to be great. <laughs> and it is, how much alcohol is in here? 5% alcohol. So it's not a drink for the kids. It's just for us adults. So cheers, everybody. Cheers. Again, simply spiked lemonade watermelon. Ah, yes. That's great. Number 10. 10 air paint. 10 paintbrushes. Here we go. Um, congrats. Congratulations. <laughs> congratulations for being here, <laughs> actually. All right, let's get going here. And let me show you my website. And so go to my website to get all my information about everything. If you're new here, all my information is on my website at beckerart.net or davidartbecker.com. And supplies are right here that we're using. Um, use your own colors if you like. And um, these are all my whole bunch of watercolors, but the gouache set I'm going to show you. I'll show you when I get there um, what colors I have in there. And I'll uh, explain the ones I'm using. And um, we're not using masking fluid or transfer paper, but um, Legion, Stu Stonehenge Legion, white paper, cold press is what we are using with my brushes. And so let's go right to the value study, get going here. And so today we're doing this scene, and it is a building. I'm not sure where this building is. And actually, I. Um, I put Bougainvillea in here with my um, Photoshop. Photoshop made me um, made it for me, and basically there was no Bougainvillea in there. But I want to use Opera. I want to use the Opera to show you how bright that color is in gouache, because gouache has been known to be very. The old days they used to be very pastel-like, and so it was like using kids' tempera paint, and so it was very chalky, very chalky paint. But nowadays, um, Holbein makes their gouache really, really finely ground, so they get some really bright colors. And I'll show you in a second. Uh, I'm going to use opera and gouache, and they do have opera and watercolor, but I want to use it thick at the very end of the painting. So it's going to be like um, putting it on like an oil, basically. But I'm going to show you, I really like that look. The look is kind of neat because it kind of goes from like a watercolor, which I didn't make it, I did it on a board this afternoon. But it's really kind of neat how it looks. So I'm going to do it no matter what. <laughs> and so here's my, um, here's the, let me turn my camera here a little bit. So um, what we're going to do here is we're going to show you the value pattern, which you always have to look for the value pattern. And I, again, make it my um, no tan. And so basically, where's the light coming through? It's in the back, the sky, and this building back here. And it kind of goes through here. You know, it's kind of like that. And then my dark is the two trees and then right smack in the middle and in the corner here. So basically like this, you know, like through the trees, this is dark. Now the middle tones here, this will go for, for the light. This is the middle tone that'll go for the light. The top of the flowers and this flower bed here, this bush, whatever, those are going to be light. And even these up here, though I will have dark in there, but it's considered part of my light area. So we're going to keep that as my light area. All right, so let's just get started here, and I'll show you what I did this afternoon. And welcome everybody who's by here today. Let me go see here who's here. Hey, Maria. Uh, hey, Barbara, Pamela, Sue, Ginger. Uh, Ginger, you're going to take my workshop in Green Bay. That's going to come up in the second weekend in um, May. And so we'll be up there. And hey, Ann and Don. And Marianne and Kathy. <laughs> All right, here we go. So let me just see. Here's what I did this afternoon. And I did it on a, um, a very flat, I think it was illustration board. So I didn't, um, I thought, I thought I had watercolor paper, but I put it on a board and actually the board was one I had demonstrated on. And so the whole bottom was blue. 
um, light blue. So I, um, but I, I just put the watercolor on top. And so it turned some of the colors, which was fine because it was gr blue, light blue, that I can make the, um, the green easily by putting uh, yellow or some kind of yellow golden into that. All right. And so this is what I did. Um, the only thing I'm going to change is I want to make a little bit more violet in it. And um, here you can see how I use the gouache. Very bright, but bougainvillea, if there's one color that is screams, if there's one um, plant that screams opera, it's bougainvillea. Um, and I didn't put any like nice vines in here, um, so I'm going to change that. But we'll do that this, after this afternoon or tonight. And now I am doing it on watercolor paper. So this was more of a panel. And so I got so many hard edges and I didn't get the roughness of the bricks that I wouldn't like, like to have gotten. I should have spattered maybe a little bit more and I could still do that. But we're going to be doing it um, with... So I'm going to save my, my light plant work and, and these um, in the bougainvillea. I'm going to save that for the end and so that I'm going to use it thick. And, you know, I know for many of you, if you want to do it the traditional way and using masking fluid and making, you know, putting your masking fluid down and then you just do opera with watercolor instead of the watercolor gouache, that's fine too. You know, it all depends on how you want to paint. Um, I'm not... You know, I don't make up those kind of rules where they say, don't ever use this, don't ever use that. No, I'm more into the thing thing saying that do whatever you have to do and make it look good. Thank you, Sylvia. Marianne, hi from Norway. Oh, welcome from Norway. And perhaps it's just on my end, but I am hearing you very nice and loud when the video started and all of a sudden the volume went down. Hmm. I don't think I changed anything. Is it still okay? Um, my microphone's right here. Okay. I must have, maybe I stepped away from it. <laughs> not sure. All right, here we go. So we're doing our lights first. Like always, we always start with our lights. And um, so I'm going to start from the back, basically. And my light seems a little bit... No, hold on one second. Seemed a little bit dark, sorry. Uh oh, what just happened? What just happened? My camera went off? Oh no. <laughs> what the hell just happened? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Not sure why my camera went off. Should never lighten the lights. <laughs> what the heck am I doing? Oh no. Sorry about this, guys. I'm not sure why my camera went down. It's not unplugged, is it? Hold on. Shoot, 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 shoot. What just went out here? There is a storm in the area, but that shouldn't mean anything. And we're back. <laughs> Very sorry about that. I must have, when I stepped over to make the light a little bit lighter, I must have taken the plug out. Sorry about that. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Oh, man, we're going to have to really rush now. So we're going to do the lights first. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm, this is my gouache. And as you can see, I have opera over here. My opera is over here. And so I'm going to use that for the, um, for the ending. And so let me take it off my palette for a moment. Well, we just put it right there. Okay, so we're going to go in here, a little bit of orange. And we're going to leave our background light. We're going to leave our background light. 
And I'm going to use a little bit more, like I said, I'm going to use a little bit more lavender on the building, even though the building is a, a beige kind of thing. I'm using paper this time instead of a board. And so um, I can get the nice rough edges on this. I'm going to go for my violet back here, and I'm going to put a little bit of orange in there too, because it is sort of like a tan building. And I'm just going to do my light parts first, just get in there with my lights. Take a little bit of this pink in this Jean number four. Just kind of go in there and just kind of go across. It doesn't matter what you go across because it's my lights. And so I'm just going to get some of the light colors in here real quickly. And then also the light green. And I'm going to use my um, gouache here. My I have leaf green and gouache, which I don't have in my watercolor. But watch this. I'm going to take my gouache and wet it down. Yes, we are back, Tina. Sorry about that, guys. I, I must have chipped over a wire. And so you're going to go with a little bit of... See, I look at it. This is almost a little bit... This is not very thick because it's got dry. This is my student's palace I bring to every one of my workshops now. But look at how bright this is, this um, leaf green. It is super, super bright because it's ground so finely. Um, Holbein does a great job and they're gouached. It's ground down so fine and it goes such a far away. It's like it's concentrated it's it's just amazing and it looks like a yellow but it's a it's a leaf green and i'm using it just sparingly and i'm using it very light not sparingly so much i am using a lot of places but i'm just kind of putting getting my lights done first go quickly with my lights and so i'm going to bring all these tomorrow tomorrow i'm doing a workshop i'm taking a workshop from don andrews It'll be interesting to see what he thinks about my colors and if I, what he thinks about gouache. I'm gonna ask him what he thinks about gouache. And he does very, he's much, very much a transparent. All this stuff is beautifully colored. So I'm gonna be finding very interesting to see. He said to um, bring your basically your own colors and see what you can do. So I'm gonna do that. So here's my lights. And have fun with your lights and you know if you want to make this look more um, a little bit more textured yours are always splashing a little bit it's it's a bunch of lights and nothing's gonna happen really it's just gonna be texture right and we want texture I got more of my screen than I got my painting <laughs> so then down here we got a light remember the light pattern that we had the black and white um, we went through here and I went down and then my dark is right to the middle here so these are all light this whole area right here is light, kind of light, and maybe a little bit more lavender through here for like shadowing. I like the shadowing effect. Um, this this pot right here is a little bit of shadow. It's kind of a little bit more of a middle tone, but that's okay. I can put that in there while it's a little wet. I just didn't think I had enough. Um, like grays in my last painting. And so by putting a little bit of lavender in it, gives it a little bit more of a look of grays. And so it can be a little light here. Again, this is my lights. Step one, remember, is always a light. So just go with your lights first. I gotta hurry. I can't believe I tripped on the wire. <laughs> always something, I swear. And so there we go. So the sky's gonna be light. We're gonna make this. These are all my lights. These are the parts. And I, I could put a little bit of opera. I actually have opera and watercolor right here. So I could put that in underneath it, but I'm gonna put it on top. So maybe we do some soft edge um, opera. We'll put a little soft edge opera here. So we'll wet it and then just kind of put it in this area. It's like a negative paint around some of it. And there's a little bit up here. Just because these are all soft edge things that are happening right now and this i can put in there and then we'll go right to our middle tones so that's pretty much my lights right let's just stick with that for my lights very simple lights are always just simple to do because you can just put whatever you want on there you're kind of establishing your colors and just trying to figure things out and nothing's ruined it may look sloppy but that's what i wanted to look sloppy i wanted to look like it's textured. There's a lot of bricks here. And I'm not using anything super dark right now. So I don't have to. It's not going to make it look like anything. 
it's not going to make an object look like whatever it is. It's just I'm coloring. I'm basically coloring my my lights. The door is going to be a dark red, like a burgundy. And this is going to be a shadow. So let's go to our mediums now. Let's hurry up and go to our mediums. And the medium is basically this shadow of the tree. And then the tree in the picture, and I didn't like exactly the way it was. It lined it up. If you look right here, look, it's lined up right to the edge of the picture for one. You don't do that. That's a tangent. So I'm not going to have it run right up on the edge. So I pulled it in. This, and I, or actually, I, my, I made the paper wider. And then this tree, um, there's a branch coming at you. And it looks like there's a little hump right there. So I just went straight up. Uh, and then I didn't put this little branch going across. So I changed the branches around a little bit. And now when we're doing the middle tones, I'm going to get this um, reflection, the shadow, I mean, the shadow of all the leaves up here. And so I'm going to get, I'm just going to get some of the, la excuse me, the lavender and a little bit of the orange, which makes kind of a, a brownish beige, you know. And so I'm just going to throw some shadowing here. I will definitely share my experience with Don Andrews. I'm going to take it. I actually taking it for all of us. You know, I'm going to, I always share when I'm learning stuff. So I definitely will share with you what I learned. I'm going to have my, my um, notebook available and I'm just going to write down whatever I feel I need to um, come back with for you guys and let's just see what I had learned or what I don't like. You know, there's sometimes the teachers that I don't like how they teach a certain thing. And I just want to make sure that I don't do something like that or, or maybe there's something that they say a certain way that I don't say in that way. But um, that happens a lot where they're teaching the same thing, but they say it in a better way than I do or a different way. It's not better or worse, but just a different way. And that's where you can learn sometimes when somebody tells you a certain thing in a different way. So now that's a medium. So I'm going in with my mediums and I'm kind of getting the look of shadowing across the... I'm also going to get some hard edge ones later. But again, this is my medium and some little shadowing going from the trees. It's going to be dappled light in here. So let's go in with our big areas of medium like in here. That's it. The door is pretty much medium. So for that, I'm going to use a burgundy, a, a crimson. So a darker red. So I'm using scarlet, um, not scarlet, like um, crimson lake. This is crimson lake. It's like a lizard crimson. I'm going to go in there with that and mix a little bit of um, Scarlet Lake with it too to make it a little bit redder. And I'm wetting as I go along. I'm going to wet as I go along. And there's dark windows in there. And I made this little this little post right there, the, um, the mailbox that's on the side. I made it not so square. I made it like an angle down a little bit so it wasn't quite the same. And if there's something you don't like about a certain thing in your picture, you change it. Change it to where you like it. And so I'm negative painting a little bit of this greenery in there. This is going to be the door. And it's very wet now. And the edges shouldn't be that sharp because this, this brickwork is a little bit. So I'm just making that so perfect. This is going to be really dark there. Um, I can put a little bit of, um, of the opera gouache in here. See, it's going to be in here. It's just going to be nice and it's going to cover up a little bit, but it's wet in the wet. So it acts like watercolor, which it is watercolor, but it's just really thicker. So here um, that it was wet. So I'm going to just let that bleed into this area. That's okay. That's going to be darker anyways later. So there's my door. And the door goes down here a little bit more down. It comes down through here a little bit. There's my door. And then um, that's going to be a dark... Uh, we can't do it right now because it's wet. Uh, I'm going to start with my, some of my greens. So um, I still haven't heard from from Holbein yet about the the Cronecadum Gold. I really would like to know. <laughs> um, hopefully they'll tell me soon. I'd like to know about that, the whole story. Like, do they have a color that will replace that? Or what's going on with Cronecadum Gold? I hear so many different versions and so many so many different things, but nothing yet from Holbein. Once I once I hear, I'll definitely guys let you know because I want to know myself what's going on there. Now I'm gonna make this the background a little bit, like the greens. I know you know that I'm not a big fan of greens, but in this instance, that's okay because where you got most of this is gonna be red and green, and the opera is considered a red, so that'll be fine. So we're going with red and green compliments today. 
I'm just going to make it use a lot of yellow, yellow, green, orange, green. And I love this brush to make um, foliage, the round brush, by just tapping, tapping with the edge of it. And, and I'm going to make some of the green very, very dark when I get to my dark stage. This is still middle tone stage, so getting my lights and middle tones first. First, you got to do that. Like all these little plants right over here are middle tone. And so that, and the edges, I make it hard so I don't wet it. And now I'm just going to wet it a little bit. And just go in there and just plop other colors in there. Cornacum gold. It just makes it such a better green when you're using, um, mixing the greens instead of buying them. There are uh, many of them there. Yes, they are pretty good. But I just find that by having Cornacum gold and all my blues, I get so many nice greens. That's what that is, Cornacum gold. And I hope I don't run out too soon because I do use it for all my greens. <laughs> Hopefully I'll find out soon. They must be busy or at a, um, some event or something. I know they were at NAMTA for a while there, which I couldn't go to this year. The product come for the product expo. So this is, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow and this whole weekend because I'll be doing nothing but painting. So by the way, there will not be a Sunday paint along this week because I'm going to be in a workshop in Don Andrews workshop. Um, if you are taking my class on Saturday morning, I will have to miss his class on Saturday morning because I have to teach my class. And so I don't want to do that, stop that because next week I will be in New York for the AWS show. So I'm going to be there instead and um, following. So I don't want to do it two weeks in a row that I'm not there. So I will be there on Saturday morning in my Saturday morning class. It's just that um, I'm going to have to leave right away so I can get, get, get back to the workshop. And we're going to see how this is, like again, our medium tones, our medium tones. That's fine. Going to go up here, put a little bit of the medium. Wait until you see how dark I get. Again, this is not my darks. These are my mediums. And some people like to say, well, why don't you put the medium or darks in right away too? And I will. Um, some places I can put it really dark in, but I want to save it for, um, for the really dark things. And the front of this wall is very textury and um, it's got all these, I'm going to have to draw in like the, the sides. And so I'm going to go across it with a dry brush effect where I'm just kind of touching it here and there. See, it's not wet, I'm, and I'm taking my brush sideways across it and just getting some of these edges on it. So I'm just kind of tapping it and getting the edges because this is rough paper, and so if you take it across quickly, you get, on a dry paper, you get this kind of dry brush look where there's texture, right? And so you get a little bit of texture there. And what color is it? Orange usually, and then a little bit of the green here, a little bit of red. Here I went into orange. I went into my lighter orange, not my brilliant orange. My brilliant orange is running out there. I better fill that up again. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And again, I'm just brushing across, but here, now this is wet, so I'm not going to get that look again. And then this will be darker in here because this is like the side of the um, edge. So that I'm going to make, run this through a little bit darker. And actually add that lavender that I did over here that's in the shadow and so i'm gonna put the lavender on there first and all this has to be darker um it can't be as light as anything in the light area that's my dark area so that's got to be dark so let's just make that dark right now any questions no okay don't be afraid to ask questions i love questions and it's going to go up this way see i'm trying to make my darks now and I'm going to take my medium darks and my dark darks, and I'm going to bring them right up through here and try to make them blend together. Like that, remember the dark I showed you in the, in the value study? It's right through the middle here and then the trees. And so that's why I would paint it. I paint it just like I see it, uh, the lights and darks. And so this potted plant right here is really dark on this edge, but then is um, kind of comes across here and gets to a soft edge, and this side is light. I'm just going to take it, wet it, and then just let it go to here. And that's already dark background, so look at that. Right through. One wash. Don't separate your washes. And this wash goes right to the side of this door. See so how that goes right to the side of the door? 
try to make your washes combine when the lights go to do with the lights and the darks go with the dark. So that wash is my dark wash and I go all the way through. I don't stop and do pieces. I do the whole wash. Later on, I will take a dark and then identify what that dark is. Like the potted plant, I'll give it the lines that it needs. I'll make it maybe a little bit darker over this area. I'll put in the grout lines and the bricks. But not now. Now I have to get the beautiful wash, the, the beautiful look of watercolor to keep it soft edge and translucent and transparent, I mean. And so just go in through here and get that nice dark pattern that you get going. That's kind of I always talk about the patterns. It's not that I'm just talking about it for no good reason. It's the most important reason is that you're trying to create the, the value pattern that you start out with that you kind of look at, that we look at all the time. And the first thing we look at is the value pattern, right? And so you got to keep that. I can't tell you how important that value pattern is. Here, I'm going to take a little bit of black. So I'm going to make it really, really dark right here. And I can add color into the black so it's not so just blah. I'm just going to take this like this. And remember up in the eaves of things, you I always like to put a little orange. So I'm going to take a little bit of brilliant orange and just put it up in there to make it look kind of nice and like the lights up into the part. And this door also will blend into this area. I'm just going to take it down like this. And I'm not going to make it too straight because these are bricks. And so they're, they're textury. So I don't need to go in there and make them super, super flat. Now the door can be nice and flat and this side can be really flat and you can even put a line there to show where it is. And then there's a few little lines here. I'm not sure if you can hear the raining on my rooftop here, but it's raining here. Let's see how I got the darks already through here. And um, now let's do the trees real quickly. So the trees are just really dark. And so I'll make them, I don't know what I should make them. Just dark. Just pick a dark and maybe not, probably not green. Like a lavender, uh, um, a light, nice lavender first. And so I'm just going to go really dark with it. Going to negative paint around this little plant here a little bit. Then I'm going to like shake a little bit, you know, get, drink a cup of coffee first before you do this part. Oh, by the way, cheers again. <laughs> cheers. This is really good. <laughs> hey, Marianne, you're new here and you have a question about the water paint, the watercolor. Um, ask away. If you're curious about watercolor paint, yeah, that's um, that's what we're using. We're using watercolors and gouache. Gouache is opaque, and um, the other watercolor I'm using is transparent. So I'm using both together. And uh, if you're working wet in the wet, even even the opaque paint becomes transparent, but gives it more of a matte look. It's a little bit more matte, and it covers more, so it doesn't give you the look like you can see through the paint, like um, transparent watercolor it is. Cause there's so, it's so much more finely ground that you don't see through the paint and makes it give it more of a matte look when it dries instead of a transparent look like you can see through the paint even though a lot of times you can't but it gives the illusion that you're seeing through the paint so ask away any questions that you want to ask i'm going to go to dark just gonna again shake a little bit on this branch don't and shake a little bit and if you need to get a cup of coffee that's fine anything to do to make it not it's not a telephone pole that they shaved no it's a, it's a pole that's very very textured this tree and then um got some extra branches in here i, I was going to use my i have this um dagger brush that's kind of neat um i'm going to try it tonight and hope i also makes this dagger brush and I'm still trying to get the whole set to to get the whole set of their brushes, but maybe someday. And see, look, at you can make all these little lines, and it's a really kind of an interesting brush how you handle it. You know, look, at I can split it apart and make two branches at once. And it's called a dagger brush, and you get very um, ad um, addicted to this brush. And sometimes it's almost like we use it too much, but... There's so many different things you can do with a brush like this, this dagger brush. It's it's a lot of fun because you can go sideways like this and look at how I can get two and I can just spin it and it makes um, very realistic look branches if you um, practice with it a little bit. See that? Look at those great branches. And now there was a couple of them are not 
thick enough, so I'm going to go back there with my regular regular brush and just make them a little bit thicker again. I'll be putting leaves up there too. All right, so now we got this dark entryway here. And so I'm going to make it warm, like almost like the door in a way. Not quite as much as the door, but I make it a warm um, window looking into this big castle type of looking window. I'm just going to put it, and I, I know there's bars across it and stuff. I'll put them in later. I'll either put them in with gouache or I will scrape them out or just use white paint, regular watercolor white paint. Now, again, the top part up here um, where the eave is, I always like to put orange there. The side here, I'm going to put that violet. Remember, I put the violet here so I can do the same thing here. So when you use a certain color and a certain like thing here, anytime it's that way in that angle of the perspective, then that just by using the color here, that means if I use it here, it's going to give you the same effect. It shows like a, like a, um, like that's part, like I use it down here too. So it looks like anything that's faced this way away from the sun and it's in shadow that then, um, automatically it says, yep, that's a shadow in that direction. So I use that a lot when I'm doing things, when I, when it doesn't have the exact shape, but you can just do it by the color if you can't get a drawing exactly to make it look like that then you just use the color because anything now that's that color that's on that angle will look like it's on that angle even if you have to go over the drawing like you don't see the drawing very good there it's still gonna look great all right and so now let's get our really dark greens over here now and that's gonna be our dark window Oh, let's get our mailbox here. I know it's a pretty small thing, but let's just get that in there right away, too. Make it a little, um, this mailbox is, I'm going to make it like a, um, turquoise kind of mailbox. Green, greenish blue, turquoise. And I'm just doing the, I slanted the top a little bit, so I'm going to make that a little bit lighter, the top. All right, and so now let's get the um, dark green going here. So I'm going to take Prussian blue, Cranium gold, and this makes a really super dark green. I'm gonna use my big brush. Let's use my big brown brush first and get all this stuff down here because there's a lot of plant life right down here. And I'm going to wet it as I go along. I don't wet it first because I'm going to leave some things hard edged so I can get some nice edges of the, of the plant life here down here. This looks all really dark down here. So let's get some really let's get some black in here black and blue and crack them gold i want it to be really dark because when i put on the the um gouache later when i put it on thick it'll really stand out you know and you can i mean you can can put some of um some of the color in there now too into the green while it's wet you can put some of this um opera in there And this whole bottom part here is kind of really a neat dark. And there's a little bit dark going right here. And again, if it looks like it's right while it's wet, it's wrong. If that's dark enough while it's wet, and you look at it and you go, oh yeah, that's perfect. It's not. It's going to lighten. So make it darker than you want it. So I'm going to go and take a little bit more dark, like a little bit more black, and dump it into the water. Just because if it's really, really wet. Now, if it was, if it wasn't really wet and you're not floating your pigment, then it's a different story because then it's, it's thick, but this is not that thick where it's going to stay that color or that value. And it's wet in the wet right now. So wet in the wet will make it once the water evaporates is whatever pigment you have left. And it's usually drying a lot lighter. And also I'm going to be using some light greens in here to make the leaves. So I know already that later on I will make it lighter. And so by making this darker now, um, it gives it gives it a kind of a neat look. Oops, and this is way too dark up there. It's a little bit lighter, light green. So I'm just going to take that out of there real quick. I could take a little bit of um, the the gouache green and put it into the water too, and that's kind of cool looking too. Like you put down the water and take some of your take some of your gouache, and it's going to still it's going to cover really well, but it's going to give you a soft edge. It covers so well. I can't believe how much it covers. It just is so finely ground. And until you use it, you're not going to know what it really can do. It's just amazing. And a couple of people asked me today in class if they can mix them on the same palette. Yes, for one. You can even put them in the same palette. But these dry out a little bit 
easier than the watercolors and watercolors don't have oxygen so they're always um, appliable to, by adding just a little bit of water where the gouache you know I put them into this case and I cover it, it it's airtight and so it, they last a lot longer in there by themselves so I kind of just separate them if you have it thick enough they they say they stay really well depending on how much pigment you put into the palette too so there's a little base also I'm putting a little bit of base in there little lavenders and let's put a little warmth in there with a little orange so you can put anything in in here if it's wet just apply it all and just get it in there wet and a little shadowing from things and yeah, because there's gonna be shadows going across these um planters now we get a dark dirt there's a dirt inside here see there's a little bit of dirt in there same thing over here i made it green though that's okay make it a little bit browner Um, the difference between the acrylic and this is not much uh, other than that when you're painting acrylic when it dries it, it's no longer um, removable and, and you can't it doesn't come up and so that's the only difference i've used acrylic like watercolor and gouache and it, you cannot tell the difference you know you cannot tell the difference if it's a watercolor or if it's acrylic it all depends on how you use the acrylic and how you use the watercolor if you're using transparent watercolor it's going to be very transparent but if you use thin acrylic it will also be transparent and it's how you're putting it down are you doing wet into wet with your acrylic or are you making it like an oil painting where you're doing it very very thick so it all depends on what you're doing it and how you're doing it but it's all just pigment with a different binder it's all pigment basically just think of it as like okay this one well when it dries it doesn't dry hard it's not plastic when it dries this is more watercolor and so it will not it will not get hard and it will wash off if you put water on it it will wash off after you're done so down here i'm going to take some lavender so that's how come i'm really liking this is i'm kind of making it look like an oil painting and having the fun a little bit of both i can make it look like acrylics i can make it look like watercolor it doesn't matter just make it in whatever you want it to be here i'm gonna put a little dirt in this top of this wall How much time do I have? Okay, a little bit more time. So now I'm getting into some of the smaller things. I'm getting like the pot, potted plants. Maybe I'll make that one orange, like it's a terracotta um, plant, planter. So maybe, maybe make that a little bit more orange. We can do the same for this too. We can make this a little bit more orange and, and get a little things there. Now we forgot up there, we've got to get the the greenery up there too like i did on the bottom so let's get some dark greenery up here gouache gouache is um, um op opaque watercolor it's watercolor but it's opaque so when you apply it meaning that it will cover it will cover up like the paper or cover up another color so it's very opaque that's what um opaque watercolor is or that's what gouache is opaque watercolor it's a different it's the same medium but just in a different um opaque and transparent way let's put a little bit of a shadow here from the box a little shadow of violet i'm using a little bit more violet which means it's kind of gray you know and i like that look now these um this is really really dark up here but i don't think i want it as dark as i had it or this, this afternoon well i didn't have it that dark this afternoon either but maybe i should because that way it will show that let's put some leaves on here so that i can tell where i'll be putting some of the shadows so i'm going to put some dark leaves up here just lightly throw some leaves some here and there just throw in some leaves same thing over here this is the background so they should be pretty light I want to make them a little bit more yellow like back here cover my pencil lines so that you don't see my pencil lines this has a little bit lighter look than i did this afternoon because i'm keeping things a lot lighter and because it's not on board the board really really 
made things flat and this gives me a little bit more chance to make things a little bit more transparent and this also absorbs a little bit more than I use this afternoon and there's a shadow going across this way too over here And this is textured this whole bottom part is textured as rocks and so i will put i'll put that texture in there just with like dabbing here a little bit so i'm just dabbing little rock type of things You guys have been doing some great paintings. Some of you have been posting on my um, Becker Art page, Becker Art group page, and really amazed at some of you guys how you're doing. Really nice. I'm really, really happy that you guys are learning. And keep on posting. They look great. Keep on, another thing, keep on painting. That's most important. All right, so now let's get these shadows, the same color shadows across the thing over here. And so let's take the same colors. What was it? Orange and purple, like I said. So a little bit of this orange. And I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. And I'm going to make these um, a little bit darker, but hard-edged. And um, I just saw this in a painting on Facebook. Somebody posted really cool shadows of um, leaves posted on a, on a building. It was really cool. So I'm going to try to copy that kind of look where you're going in there and getting the, the look of leaves and branches coming across the, across the bricks. And you also still want to get the bricks, though, but that's part of our dark details. We'll go back in there and get all these little lines that we need in there. Those will come in a second. Right now, I'm trying to get the, the look of shadows going across, across the page. Actually, they, I'm going to use my rigger brush. Where did my dagger brush go? Oh, there it is. Maybe the dagger brush will do it. Give it a neat look. Um, I don't teach an acrylic anymore. I used to, but I, I don't teach an acrylic anymore. Um, because, like I said, you can use the same technique with acrylic. You can, do, you can do the same thing I'm doing right now in acrylic. It's no different. It's just pigment. And when you see later how I use it thicker, it's a whole, it's the whole same thing I, I used to teach with acrylic, but I taught it just like this. It was no different from what I'm teaching right now. So I'm going a little bit darker right here. Yeah, I don't like to make, the, make them that much different because it's just pigment. And how you, you can use acrylic like this, there's four different kinds of acrylic. There's ink acrylic, gouache, um, ink acrylic, gouache acrylic, fluid acrylic, and um, heavy bodied acrylic, which is heavy. Um, so there's all different kinds of acrylics. So depending on what you're using, you can make it look just like this, exactly like this. And I'm putting my really dark darks in this little detail right here. This is such a fun painting. We had really a lot of fun today in class, so have fun with this one. This one is just, it's just so refreshing to kind of do this. Not really that hard. Um, you just go in there and make sure your drawing is okay, but you know, just see what you see in the photograph and just go ahead and paint. It's gonna turn out and do it, go through, you know, make sure you, and uh, you definitely have to have the drawing okay so that you can go back in and get your details. That's what I'm doing now. I'm just getting my details, making my lights and darks and, and getting darker and darker. Do some splatter, but you know, wait until you see how I do the flowers. You're going to love it. It's just so much fun. It's so, so cool to get the flowers on top of this dark and stuff. Oh, I just love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, we're going to keep that light, keep that light. This is all dark. Um, all right, let's get to our fine details. That's pretty much all my large areas of middle tones and darks. And and actually, let's make this a little bit darker here so I can get the yellow in there. Get a little bit more reflection and shadow. 
and the trees. And they would come across here too. They'd come across here. This can be a little bit darker up there. I'm still gonna get the lines to make um, the lines darker for the detail details. All right, so now we're gonna go in here and do the door. Cause that's the most important part of the whole picture is the door. Thank you, Tina, for the um, promoting. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm gonna put some more of this in here. This is really good. <laughs> this is a 10. But again, it should be on the beach. This is the kind of thing you do in the summer on the beach. Yeah, um, you can find all my videos online. They're all free. You know, and you can, um, there's even a um, video online to show you where you can find them all. So now there's little details of the bricks. Now these, this door has a really dark, dark, dark windows in it. So I'm gonna take some black. I'm just gonna make it really, really dark. And I think, let me see, where did I put my line? I can't quite see where the line is. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, This one is a little bit angled nice and crisp really clean now this is the this is the clean part this is the part where i'm trying to get a little bit cleaner with my work you know get some details in there you know it's good to get details in your work i don't do all my um paintings completely detailed i'm not a hyper realist but i do like to get some really fine details in there now and really work on that center of interest and get those details really looking good you know, copy what you have to in the photograph to make it look like almost a photograph. But it's still going to look like a watercolor because it is a watercolor. And let's get some more violet in here. Violet across here. Dappled light. I'm doing like dappled light. So it kind of goes down here and... All right, now the bricks themselves have a little bit of um, the lines, the um, grout lines. And so I'm gonna go in here and now get some of the grout lines and also some of the actual color of the bricks. Like the actual color could be darker. Each brick can be a little bit darker and lighter. And this is detail stage now, so get as detailed as you want. I mean, especially in the center of interest right here, you're gonna get really, really, really detailed. Like here we can get the bricks the um, lines and here we even got some bricks going this way here we got the beautiful bricks going all the way around here and do the grout line and um here there's a light part right here so i'm going to rub it out and this paper again is very easy to rub out so see i just put a little water on it make it thirsty and then just rub it just rub across a wet brush and then take it off on your towel and then just thirsty it up. You know, make it thirsty and make pick up the pigment again. So there's this bars across there. I make it wet first, like a line of wet. Take it off and then make it dry so that I'll pick up the pigment. Look at that. Boom. Three lines that I, were just there. It's just the paper. I didn't do anything different, you know, with um, here up here. I'm going to make this more orange. I'm going to lighten this up a little bit. I like making orange in the eve of things. See how that looks really neat with the orange up there. And there should be more, a little bit darker right here going down because I want a little bit more of the reflection of the tree into this building. Same thing over on this side. I want to make it a little bit more orange, a little bit of purple again. Makes it kind of gray. Get the lines in there. Over here could be a little bit no more gray. All right, I think we're ready for some, what time is it? Oh, we still got plenty of time. So 
I'm going to do a little bit more details. There's the brick work and and in here, there's those little racks in there too. So I'm going to take a little bit darker purple. And so we'll go in here now. What are we doing? What am I doing? Oh, the racks, the little pebbly racks, little pebbly racks. I'm just making little dots. It's almost like when the, when the eclipse was around, it made those really weird shadows. That's what you can do down here. Just make weird, weird rounded shadows or little racks. Here's the grout lines, I'm just making the grout lines. So it's a little bit more detailed. All right, I think we're ready for, let's make this a little bit darker and some shadows across the branches here too. Cause this looks pretty flat, these trees. So what I like to do is I like to take other colors and shadow them up and, and reflect other colors into the tree. Cause they're just not one color all the way up. So I put a little red in there. Put a little bit more, a few more green leaves in here. Let's make some, let's make some light green leaves. So I'm using my gouache now, and that will cover up. Look how easy it covers up anything because it's opaque. It's going to cover up. That's why I use it so it covers up. And I'm using it not super thick. This is still wet, but it's so finely ground, it will just eliminate the color underneath it because it's like buying good paint for your walls. If you're covering up black, if you buy really good paint, it covers it up, right? Well, that's what this is. This is really, really finely ground pigments, a lot of pigment in there. And it makes it look super, super um, opaque. There are a lot of artists out there now that are just doing opaque and, and they're making it more like oil paint. So you can do that too. If you don't want the look of watercolor, then you just use it thick. Then you just use it like it's, it's acrylic or use it very like heavy body to paint. Cause you can do that too with, um, and they also have acrylic gouache. They have the acrylic gouache, just like they have this watercolor gouache. There's acrylic gouache. Just putting these lines over here. But then, you know, when it dries, you're, you're done. That's it. You know, there's no going back into something here. I can go back in and, and, and I can rub something out and, All right, let's get to our nice colors now. So now I'm going to show you how you can use the opaque, the gouache, and go in and just emphasize the things that you um, didn't couldn't get in before because you didn't put masking fluid down or you wanted to be really light. Like I can put white paint in, I can make things darker, lighter, but they're going to be opaque. And so there will be the flowers that and right over here in the picture, that's bougainvillea. And so here's the vine I did this time, which I finally got a vine in there. And so let's make that a little bit darker. I'm going to, matter of fact, let's make that vine a little bit darker. A little bit. Because those vines are really cool. When the bougainvillea, how it wraps around things. And, oh, I just love it. I used to teach in California in Palm Springs. And, oh, man, there all these hotels we stayed at. They had all these bougainvillea. It was so cool. So there's my opera. I'm just going to dip right into it. Very thick. Very thick. And I'm just going to... You just dab it right down and it's so thick it's gonna I'm using it not thin I'm using it and now no water no water I'm not using any water just using a pure out of the tube and putting it down for my flowers and look at how it covers and how bright it is and yes it is thick and this is like doing oils so this is basically like you're doing an oil painting you know, you're putting it down there and just leaving it um, you can also wet it and it can be soft edged, but I don't want to do that right now. I want to make them so thick that you see it and actually you can feel it too. I want it so hard that you can actually feel it. And then a couple of spots, what I'll do is I'll make it darker. I'll mix it with a, with a little bit of a purple. I'll go in here. I have purple over here or a lizard to make it a little bit darker. And then I'll get those dark, dark, um, little, little flowering parts. You know, and this is uh, an easy way of making your flowers, making your painting look beautiful and still giving it a watercolor look. I mean, the rest of the painting looks like watercolor, right? And this is just one part that's going to stand out. And I kind of like it standing out. I want it to stand out. And so I'm making it nice and thick. And I'm putting little dots in the corner. 
corner here there's a few don't make just don't dot it like it's a bunch of like stars they kind of grow in little packs here so do it more like in little pack packs though here and then on the top part here there comes there's a little bit of a part that comes right through here and this is detail i love detail when you get to this stage and you know make it look great and here i'm going to add a little white to it how about adding a little bit of white to make it really light light pink you can do that too because some of these up here are, are really light pink and so i'm just adding white to the white to the opera to make it really light um pinkish color so that'll look like the flowers are lit up those bougainvillea are lit up and then while you have it in your brush you might as well go other places right away and put them in there too And so let's put a few up here while I have it in my brush. Just get some of the light, light ones. They would be closer to the light. They would be the ones that are closer to the light. Rinse out my brush. Now go back into Bougainvillea. Uh, go back into Opera. <laughs> I keep on calling it Bougainvillea. And then do um, a couple of plants here. This one is a Bougainvillea bush. And like I said, I had changed this image in Photoshop because it didn't have any flowers at all. And so I wanted flowering, uh, flower effect. And so I asked, um, what do you call it, um, Photoshop to put them in there for me. And it did. And it took me a couple of times until I got that, until I liked it. But then, you know, I liked it the way it was. And so I said, yep, that's great. Now look at how nice that looks. Isn't that great? I mean, how much fun is that to go in here and just tap it right in? Put it right in. You don't need to have, um, you know, to put masking fluid down first and deal with all that. You just put it in, and I'm done. Nice and thick, and even when you go to wax it um, or you go to varnish it, it's going to give it a really neat look because there's actually a, a depth to it. It's actually, it's actually, you can put your hand across it when it's dry, and you can feel the difference in the, in the, in the texture. It will actually be textured up a little bit. And for some reason, this is not covering as well as it did this afternoon. I added some new in. I wonder if I... It's not covering as well. I wonder if I get a different... I think I put on opera. I think this is because this is still damp, and so you're going to get some darkness. If it's damp, if you're putting it on dry, then it'll stay. But if you're putting it on damp, it's sucking into the paper a little bit. Okay, that's now the um, bougainvillea, but how about the leaves, the light leaves? And that's the fun thing, too, is I'll take this um, this leaf green. This is a really bright leaf green. Look at that green right there. Um, the gouache does not dry 30% lighter because you're putting it on thick. If you're using it like watercolor where it's really thin, then yes, it does. But not like this. This is going to stay exactly like you put it on because it's so thick, it's going to stay there. It's not going to lighten up or darken up or anything. It'll just be whatever you put down there. That's what's going to happen. Now, if you're putting it in the water, though, um, like I said, it's going to, it's going to, it's definitely going to look um, lighter because the water is washing it out. But if you're using it thick like I'm using it and putting it on there very thick, it will not get lighter. So see, I'm, I'm just putting little leaves in this area right here, which I can just put in there so I can don't have to negative paint around them. Though I did negative paint around some of them, so that's kind of cool too. I have some negative painted and some just positive. And I'm going to put a few up here just where I think it should be light. Did I miss any questions? Beautiful painting. Yeah, I did um, make it a little bit higher key than this afternoon. This afternoon's was a little bit darker and a little bit different. Um, this one's got a little bit darker. Um, but, uh, yeah, I kind of always have lightened it up. And uh, most of us do that anyways, just automatically. We make things lighter because we're never, we're never getting the exact um, lightness that we really want. Or just, cause we don't put enough pigment, pigment on. But see, I'm just putting a bunch of leaves in here now. And you can go crazy with the leaves, too. And you can make it super detailed. Or just, you know, if you feel, it depends on how detailed you want to get. You can make it really detailed or not so detailed. It's up to you how, how far you want to take it. 
I mean, I can make this look like every little rock in there and they make it look hyper realist, but that's not kind of my kind of style. So I, I don't do that, that, that detailed, but I'm trying to get a little bit more detailed with certain parts of my paintings so that the center, especially the center of interest, I want to just get a little bit more detailed with those parts of my paintings. Here, maybe a little bit darker to get this edge wall and, and the potted plant there. All right. See anything else, Tina? <laughs> Did you dry your brush before you dip into gouache? Um, no, because I added a little bit of water on this one. But in the opera, I did. In the opera, I just dipped in because it's very creamy. This one was a little bit harder, so I put a little bit of water in there to rejuvenate it. See, I'm rejuvenating a little bit more. Because the green, for some reason, the green dried a little bit faster. And so I had to kind of make it a little bit, a little bit thicker by adding a little bit of water and take enough pigment out. So that's another thing. If you put in fresh, um, fresh of the gouache, you don't have to put, use water because it's so thin. Well, it's so thick and it's kind of like creamy. It's like, it's like you're using, um, using acrylic paint, but when you put water on it, then it ends up being looking like watercolor because it's transparent. Then I don't care how thick it is. If it's water on it, it makes it, uh, less, less opaque. Let's put some really bright. Let's use this with white. Let's use it's some white with the green and let's make it a really bright yellowish and make it like come off of this thing a little bit. You can have fun. This is so much fun because you're, you can go back to making it look a little bit more realistic because you can get your lights back you can put it right on top of there. Now you couldn't enter this in the TWSA transparent watercolor society because it's not a transparent watercolor, but you can um, submit it to AWS or TWS or I mean, NWS or AWS because they accept it. They'll, they'll accept it. It doesn't matter if it's opaque because it still is watercolor. It's just an opaque watercolor. Last but not least, I'm going to put the bars across the window here or a nice dark. I'm not going to make these part light. I'm just going to go in here with a dark, put them in. And I think that will be it. Oh, I'm already past. So there you have it, guys. There it is. It's so much fun. I went right past. So let me show you the other one from this afternoon and this one. So here, this red looks a little bit brighter because I think I, I put it on thicker. I put it on thicker than this side because it's a little bit more. Um, I mean, I really pushed it on with a big brush. And same thing with the with the greens. But then again, my underneath was a little darker, and here it was dry, and um, here it was still a little wet, so it soaked in a little bit. But there you have it, guys. There's um, the two different kinds of uh, watercolor and gouache together. And yes, it is a little bit higher key than before. Mailbox fake lettering. Um, we can do that. Oh yeah, there's a little bit of lettering on there, isn't there? Let's just put a little bit of white lettering on there. A little fake lettering. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Always watching out. And yes, that's good. I can also do that on this one too. I have to do that later. <laughs> I don't think I see anything else, but thanks guys. Um, remember a thumbs up. Thank you. Please um, hit thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. We love you to have you subscribe because then you'll be warned when I'm doing some live stuff. And again, this Sunday, I will not be doing a, um, a, a, a Becker or David in the studio. Or, what is my, what I call it? Sunday, Sunday with David, <laughs> Sunday demo with David. So there's no Sunday demo with David this week because I am taking a workshop with Don Andrews. And so I will not be um, available to do one. I'll be painting, but I won't be able to show you. I'll show you afterwards. All right. Until then. Till next Thursday, and am I going to be next Thursday? Also, I will not have. I'm heading to New York next Thursday, and so I don't think I'll be doing a paint along either because I'll be in in the air and flying to New York on Thursday next Thursday. So we may do it Wednesday. So check my newsletter, and you'll find out everything in my newsletter. But until then, we'll see you later. Thanks, guys. <laughs>